Uh, Chris, hey, this is Marcia Dunn talking to you from the Kennedy Space Center today. Um, I guess if you got to leave the planet, now's the time. <laughs> um, is there some part of you that's just glad to get away from all this craziness taking place across the globe? Uh, hi, hi Marcia. Great to talk to you. Hopefully you're healthy and, and in a safe place, but uh, good morning. Yeah, um, it's really interesting. It, it's none like any other time in our in our lives as a generation, really, right? Like, to me, it, this is goes into where were you when JFK was shot? Where were you when you landed on the moon? And where were you when coronavirus was happening? And I'll have my own interesting story to tell in, in years to come. Well, tell me about all the special precautions you're taking. I understand even your wife and your kids can't even go to your launch. Uh, how are you making sure that you stay germ-free and don't carry the coronavirus up to the space station with you? Well, one, one of the things about being life as an astronaut is you've got lots of people who are very concerned about your health. And uh, so I've got plenty of assistance in, in that, making sure that uh, um, we stay physically in a safe location and the things that we're touching in contact with are also as germ-free as we can make them, or virus-free, I guess. Uh, and uh, we're all the same precautions that everybody else out there is taking, washing hands and, and uh, social distancing and all of, all of that stuff. Here in Star City, we live in these uh, cottage-type buildings, and for, to a large part, I've been just there. Uh, there's a small grocery store uh, a quarter of a mile away, and we walk over there to that, grab, grab our food. Uh, I, maybe you can't tell, but I think I need my hair cut, and I've been debate, debating whether or not to uh, get that done here in Star City before I leave or just go like a, a shaggy rag doll to the space station and get it cut up there where I know the, the shears are clean. Well, you know, um, this sort of harkens back to the old days of space launches, uh, you know, Mercury, Gemini, even Apollo, when the wives and the children stayed back home in Houston and, 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 and the astronauts launched uh, just with staff around them. How weird is it going to be to even have a reduced staff around you at Baikonur, which I'm assuming is going to happen on launch day? What, what, and what extra precautions are going to be taken on launch day to keep – you far enough from from the staff yeah Marsha that's a great question I've been actually thinking about that what what the not only launch day but the, we're, we're in Baikonur for uh, a solid two weeks before launch and we live in um, this uh, hotel and that that won't be hard that won't be any different we're, we're very isolated and and food is prepared in a special place just for us and the and the whole staff is is uh, lives through the team protocol that's very normal uh, what won't be normal is, as you indicated, on, on launch day when there is normally throngs of people there and cheering and, and uh, ha slapping us uh, on the back as we're uh, loading up the buses and music playing. And then when we get to the building where we put our suits on, that's where we have managers and family members, although they're behind the glass, they're still there. This time, that won't exist. They will be in that same room. We'll be looking through the glass. At, um, at maybe one video camera or something like this, and, uh, and then we'll get on the bus, same thing, very minimal folks out there. It really is going to be strange. Um, I'll tell you about it later, I guess. Let's talk again in six months. Well, are, are you already in quarantine? Did they move up quarantine for you? Oh, I'm absolutely already in quarantine. That's been the normal plan. Uh, we did not need to accelerate quarantine. It just sort of, ironically, the timing of our entering the, the strict quarantine protocol uh, somewhat magically lined up with the world caving in in terms of uh, pr quarantine protocol. It hasn't been that different in terms of when I, I anticipated entering quarantine. And tell me, you, you're, you're flying with two uh, cosmonauts that you weren't originally assigned to fly with. What was your reaction when you learned that there was going to be a crew swap, and how well do you know these two new crewmates of yours? Well, for I, I, was, I was crushed, actually, that we were swapping because I, the person, the two people that were my crewmates uh, before 
were my really dear friends, and uh, I was so looking forward to spending six months on board the space station with them. And then to hear that it was a medical uh, accident just made it even more unfortunate for uh, just, you can't, life is precious, I guess, and just savor every day is what it made me realize. Uh, I know the two guys, uh, Anatoly and Ivan. I've known Anatoly for years, and we've had dinner at each other's houses uh, in, in both countries. So no issues there. Uh, I, I was just really, my heart hurt for my two friends that thought they were so close to a rocket launch and were not getting get one. And uh, it made me realize you don't know who your crewmates are until the rocket lights on the pad. And then, then you know you have who your crewmates are. Well, how well do you know the two new guys? And um, how is your, I heard it was an eye injury for your uh, former crewmate. How's he doing? It was an eye injury. Fortunately, he's doing well. I've seen him multiple times throughout this, uh, my two two weeks here in, in Star City. And uh, it looks like he'll, he'll with, uh, with, all, with all luck, uh, be able to get back into the flight assignment process a little bit down the road, maybe later in the year. Uh, so, so that's good. Uh, and I know that the two, Anatoly and I Yvonne, I, I know them well. We're, of course, we're getting to know each other more and more because the, the training intensity ratcheted up a little bit as soon when, um, when I arrived and, and we had never been in the simulator together. So, so we've been training intensely for the last two weeks, but we're ready to go. Well, what's your stress level right now? Here you are uh, with a planet full of, of uh, coronavirus. You got a crew swap, which doesn't happen very often. And do you think your your former life as a Navy SEAL helps you deal in times of all this craziness? Huh. My my former life as a Navy SEAL, um, I don't think has any anything to do with my preparation right now. I think it's just me as a person. I I am. Uh, uh, I am not concerned about any of the operational stuff, which is weird. You, a lot of times at this point, you you start thinking about what if, what 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 do I got to do here? And in fact, we've we've been talking about the possibility of doing a spacewalk in day, flight day two or three when I arrive, and uh, just a really really busy time on board in the first week, particularly when when we have the overlapping crew. That doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I have kind of a I'm excited. Bring it on. Let's get on with the work aspect to that. But my stress level, to be quite honest with you, Marcia, is, is a little high for um, all the people that I care about. Like my wife and I have been trying to figure out what's her plan to go home. And the our, we thought we would say goodbye um, on launch day. And now it's looking like it'll be tomorrow uh, where we may say goodbye for, for the final time. And and and. When you have a plan and things change without out of your control, that's when it can be a little stressful. You know, we're 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 only human, and, and we'll 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 work through it. It'll be fine. But um, those are the things that are that are on my mind these days. Is is what the what's what are the travel plans for for my friends and family? I have one um, child that's in New Zealand, and he's trying to get home, and his plans are all all screwed up too. So it's it's just. The stress, the things that are stressing the rest of the world and the rest of America are the same things that are stressing me right now. So your wife is with you in Star City. I didn't realize that. Uh, that's sort of a lucky break for you because that must be a comfort. Yeah, exactly. And and um, we we knew that we uh, had the ability to have her be here this whole month prior to going into quarantine. This was long ago when, when we were thinking about what, what the months leading up to launch would be. And so it turns out it was a real uh, lucky opportunity that we've been able to, to be together like this because it would be a really crushing blow if we were not together during this month and then she was not, be, was not able to get to Baikonur uh, and, and unbeknownst to us, our goodbye would have been back in Houston uh, on February 28th or 29th, and and we wouldn't have known that would have that. I, I'm very fortunate that we've been together for this this month. 
Well, Chris, I think my time is up. Uh, stay healthy, germ-free, as well as your crewmates. And I guess your flight six months. Uh, any chance it might go longer? And I'm signing off. Thanks. Thanks, Marcia. Take care. Be